Right, so our leather wrapped buckle is now ready to be stitched. So we have a nice finish on there and that's now ready to go. So I'm gonna place it in my stitching pony. So just some tabletop clamps. Like so. And then tighten that in there. Now the thread that I'm gonna use on this is filo chinois cordonnet glacé. So this is a thin polyester, which is around 0 0.3, 0 0.35 millimeters after waxing perhaps. Now to stitch this in, I'm not going to be using a pricking iron, pricking wheel, or any kind of stitching iron at all. I'm simply going to be going by eye. Now for these tiny little stitches, this is most commonly how it would have been done, especially for very awkward to get to areas, because you can't place this down on a flat table and then start hammering away with a stitching iron. It's not gonna be possible to get in there. Now you could use a small wheel and very carefully make an impression going all the way around, but it's not really gonna help you that much. And in chrome tan leather, it recovers from marks very, very easily. Chrome tan leather, very difficult to scratch compared to vegetable tan leather, so it's not as easy to mark. Now the all that I'm going to use is this one here, and I did a blog post, so if you wanna check that out, I did a blog post on how to make one of these with a collet, which is simply a collar at the end, which can undo and then do up, and you can change blades very, very easily. Now, the blade on here is actually a large needle, so it's a John James 002 needle, and what I've done is I've snipped off the end and then I've rubbed it on a stone on one side turned over 180 degrees and rubbed it on the other side and that way it has a chisel tip so this is just a small needle it is not a pre-made blade okay so just a chisel tip needle and they actually very, make very good all blades uh, using needles. I've used sail, ma sail makers needles before as well. That's actually very, very good as well. And I'm going to be stitching about one stitch every 1.5 millimeters. So it's a very, very small, very, very fine stitch. You can go smaller if you want to, but then you start getting into the possibility of losing some durability or pulling through your leather and cutting it because it's just so thin. I think 1.5 you can still see that it's a stitch. Any lower than that, uh, it just looks like a white line because I'm using uh, an off-white thread here to contrast and so you guys can actually see it. Now, if I was making this for myself or someone else, I'd probably choose to go with black to have that really stealthy look, um, but it wouldn't be possible to see it on camera, so I'm using an off-white thread here. Plus, if you want to show off your stitching abilities, contrast is going to be good for that. So double checking that we have the face side in the clam. So the face side is where your tongue comes down. There's a little dimple there and you can kind of see it in the leather where I've heat molded it in place. So that goes in here. So I'm right-handed, so this is my right-hand side here. And I'm gonna start my stitching right near the top, right at the base, right where I've made that little crease with our single crease. Then lift up. And as I push in, I'm not gonna bring it through horizontally. I'm actually gonna lift it up like so. And that way we can get a little bit lower on this side to gather more leather so that when we pull that stitch in, it's gonna pull in nice and tight. So we're actually increasing the distance between the hole being made on this side and where the hole comes out on this side. This would be the shortest distance. This will go through and gather more leather. And that way when we pull the stitch in, Again, it pulls the leather in and stretches that leather out a little bit more so we can get a nice tight wrap. It's not essential, it just adds a little bit more. So I'm gonna make one hole and come back one and a half millimeters and make a second hole. And that way I can go in and start with a back stitch. Thread-wise, I've got about a meter here, which is just over a yard or just over three feet. And then before we cinch that in, double checking. Yes, we are equal, and now we know we have equal thread. Delicately pull in. 
just very delicately. Coming back, again, about 1.5 millimeters. We're not gonna get any angles on this, so I'm gonna cast. Generally, delicately does it. Now, if you don't have one of these and you don't want to make a little chisel tip needle awl, I'm gonna show you a little bit of a hack so that we don't actually need anything at all. Take your right needle, okay? Or left needle if you're left-handed. Place it right in that crease line that we made with our single crease. The set distance that you've chosen, push it through one side, push it through the other, okay? Thin leather, it's not difficult to push a saddler's needle through. I'll do it again. This side from the rear side, so you can actually see it without my hand being in the way. Now I've changed something, so likely the uh, seam isn't gonna look its best at this point, but this isn't gonna be seen, remember? One more time. Left needle through, and you can just go ahead and gather it. So it is possible just to use the needles themselves. It's not actually that difficult to go through. In fact, you could probably get a needle and pull it inside a collet awl, or what this is made from, a pin vise. Okay, and these are very, very cheap. You can buy them on eBay, AliExpress, Amazon, etc. And uh, you can put your needle, awl, or whatever you like inside that and just stitch with this little piece here. Very simple. You can even use a sharp needle if it helps. Now along this bit, I am keeping things consistent and I'm doing a little tiny stitch, but you can, if you want to, space it out to say three millimeters along here to save time. And then as you come out where it's going to be exposed, you can then uh, shorten that stitch. Coming into the corner right on the apex of the corner on the next one. So I'm just going to loosen this and then just turn it to make life a little bit easier. Now occasionally, <laughs> when it's at a funny angle, the tongue is gonna catch you out. So that's something to be aware of. Now we can turn and we're on to our first straight.
And just to finish off here, on our last couple of stitches, we're going to do two back stitches. So we can lose the all temporarily. And now, as you go back through, we're going to wrap it over the rear side. So if I lift it up so you can see there, wrap it once, twice, and same again, one more time. One, two. So that's locked in there. You shouldn't need to uh, add a touch of PVA, but feel free if you want to. Remember, if you are using polyester, you could just uh, give it a zap with a thread zapper or uh, very carefully with a flame. So now that's stitched in, it's a matter of boning that down. So you go around with the bone folder to make sure it's nice and pressed in. And also we're gonna then start our trimming process on the outside, getting nice and close to those stitches to give a nice polished look. So now we've finished our stitching, I'm just gonna take a bone folder and go on the rear side just in case you're not happy with the way the stitches look after boning them down. But we're just gonna press them in It'll become a little bit more prominent. If you don't like that, then you can leave the front as it is. Just flattens them down a little bit, reduces the chances of wear. And then the front, if you so wish. Right, so now that's complete, let's trim the edges. And for this task, I'm going to recruit a trusty edge beveler. This is a number two. The width between the guides is about 1.8 millimeters. Okay, so ideally thicker than you're gonna be using here. So 1.5 to two millimeters uh, between the two guides, and that will give you a blade of that width. I just get in there. Be very careful when you start it that you don't suddenly jolt forwards. And I'm going to have it so that the guide is very close to the stitches. And now I'm going to switch to the other way around, so it's backwards now. And again, I'm going to use the guide and I'm going to have the guide just hovering above the stitches because the blade is recessed very slightly back from the top of the guide here. On this case, it's about 0 0.7 millimeters. So letting that guide just hover just above the stitches, it's gonna get me nice and close. Again, I'm using my finger there, so I'm actually using my finger to apply pressure to this to slow down its movement. That way I can't go too fast. And just to be clear, I'm actually using the guide to hover above the stitches. It's not actually touching anything. I'm using it only as a visual guide. So I'm freehanding this. So this is our primary cut. So we want to get as close as possible to how our edge is going to be on the finished product. Ideally, minimal finishing or trimming after this.
so important on the back there because this is going to be curved over. You could leave a bit more excess there because there's going to be room on the inside of the belt for that. So it's not too much of a problem. And using a piece of string here with some abrasive compound, some green compound. And I'm just going to pull that through a couple times just to resharpen this because any trimming is going to require a very, very sharp blade. So one more. And now I can go around. There's a little bit of a bump on that side there, so I'm just going to remove that. Quite easy. Switch around to the other side and you'll see a little bit more of a variation. So now you can go around and very, very carefully just catch it. And you want to make sure you have a very sharp blade for this. Sharp blades make life so much easier. And if you haven't seen the course yet, Techniques of the Blade is one I recommend you watch just to get the idea of how to sharpen. Now you can take either a manual crease and heat it over a flame till it's nice and hot or use an electric version, uh, just using a wax, wax spatula here. And I'm just going to go over those edges and flatten them down. So this is the second stage of the process is to flatten and smooth. And the edge will splay out as in the edge will get thicker. But I'll show you why that's important in a bit. Right now, we want to get that edge nice and flat. So I'm just ironing. There's nothing on the edge. I haven't put anything on it. It's just raw edge, raw leather. And I'm doing the main shaping process. So just flattening and pressing it down, which will get it even closer to the stitches without removing any more material than necessary. So increasing the density of the leather rather than removing more material. So just take a minute or two just to go around, make sure it's nice and flat. And the next stage is to take a smaller edge beveler. So the smallest size, 0 0.7 millimeters is this technically, and it's a number four. And then go around and catch the lip that you've created by that mushrooming effect. So when we've gone over the edge, it spreads it out to the side and we want to take those sides off to get it back in again. But because this is soft chrome tan leather, even though it's a sharp knife, it's not firm enough to really catch those little tiny pieces on the edge there. So to get that lip, I'm going to go over and harden the edge of the leather with a solution. And that solution is acrylic resiline. So taking some resiline and just a skewer that I use for edge paint sometimes. Just going to dip it in so we've got some and then just go over those edges. And this is going to soak in and firm up that leather which makes it a lot easier to then trim. Essentially what I'm doing is giving it the characteristics of vegetable tanned leather for the purpose of trimming. A little bead under there, there it is. So you're just pulling around. If you do get any of this on the surface of the leather, just uh, quickly wipe it with a damp cloth. So if you want to have that handy, I'm going to leave that for about 15 to 20 minutes to fully dry, and then we can trim with our smaller edge beveler. So now this has had enough time so that the edges are now dry. 
I'm just going to give this another go over with a touch of heat. So just smoothen those edges, a few quick swipes. And as long as it doesn't feel hot or particularly warm, we can now go over it with our 0.7 millimeter or 0 0.6 or 0.7 or a number four edge beveler. So as always starting on the rear side, the side of least importance, and we're just trying to catch any lip. If there isn't one, that's fine. Lucky you. The likelihood is slim, so we need to take that off. And we're thinning that edge down a little bit more now. And on the front side, And one more touch of heat this time I'm getting in the angles as well I'm not just going over the edge flat I'm coming in and out on each edge turning it giving that nice domed effect <laughs> 